Pushing herself through the bins and racks of normal sized clothes toward the big and tall men's section of the store, Malaya thought about the 10th grade dreadlock poet. She imagined him sitting in this video, says she imagined him singing, she imagined singing with him, singing the songs that came out on the radio that night, uh, that, I'm sorry, that had come out on the radio that summer and the summer before. There were no mannequins in the big and tall men's section, only reams of logo stamped cloth folded two or three times back, elbows pinging together, hems rolled three times under, arms tucked into cuffs to give the illusion of a reasonable human-sized form. Malaya pushed past the Paco and Boss and Pele Pele racks toward the MC section. She chose an MC as her favorite label ever since she made the twin discoveries a year ago that the brand both carried her size and spelled out the initials of her name with its logo. As soon as this thought occurred to her, Malaya Condon had made the MC shirt her uniform. And when a few years later, a few months later, she heard her cake-faced icon, the rapper Baby Smalls, write the word into a new song drenched with selfless and awe, she began to treat the MC clothes as a sort of spiritual guard and made the song her personal hymn. Throw down some ice for the nicest MC. Niggas know the stilo. Unbelievable. Malaya scanned the racks for purple MC sweaters uh, and, a, and a pair of size 50 jeans, imagining giddily how the cuffs of the jeans would fold into the tongues of her Timberland boots like the curls of soft serve ice cream into waffle cones. As she hovered beside the banks of oversized denim, a saleswoman approached. The woman was about 25, with skin the color of Ritz crackers and eyes slow and loose as warm apple cider. But when Malaya asked for what she wanted, the woman looked at her as though she had requested a side of creme fraiche with her McDonald's value meal. <laughs> <laughs> they don't make big men's shirts in purple, the woman said, running a green acrylic tipped nail over her hairline. And the biggest jeans we got is 48. Sorry. The woman handed her the size 48 jeans and suggested that she try on a velour sweater the color of tile grub instead. Malaya accepted the clothes with a tepid smile, and the sales girl sighed lightly behind her as she walked toward the fitting room turning herself sideways to fit through the stall door. She slid her headphones on and read the graffiti on the wall, reaching down to unlatch her button, feeling her stomach slide into place and sigh. The tight, mildewed air of the fitting room licked at the strip of flesh around Malaya's waist, raked raw over the years by the constant rub of her too tight jeans. Malaya breathed in as she felt the raw flesh seethe in the air. She wiped her fingers on her jeans and touched the skinless strip, patting it dry with the back of her hand, wincing at the sting of contact, preparing to cinch herself once more into jeans she knew would not fit. She pulled the 48s up, past the thick, ashy beams of her calves, past the places where her thighs bulged with fat like the flourishing tops of ionic columns. Then she breathed in again, trying to suck in her skin, her fat, her muscle, her lungs, and whatever it was that lay under all of those things, making her who she was, this person, in this body, wedged between the tight walls of the big and tall men's dressing room, wishing at her core to feel small and slight and somehow like a girl. Her muscles tensed, Malaya pushed the ends of the denim together like a stubborn child in science class, determined to force attraction between two magnets destined to repel. When she finally looped the button through its hole, her stomach bulged over the top of her jeans, and the waistband strained desperately against her skinless middle. Her eyes growing hot, she struggled to keep her face together, to keep her cheeks from cracking, to keep her chin from sinking to keep her eyes from melting and gushing into the fibers of the rug. She stood there, her face stinging with water, as the sales girl sighed and impatient, You okay, miss? on the other side of the door. In that moment, Malaya wished that she had in childhood and so many times before to be gone. If the jeans would not give, she wished that they would take and take and take until her hopes of ever having a waist had vanished completely, until her body really became a separate thing from her smile, something she could leave there on the fitting room floor while she floated above the clothes, above the noise, above the expectant whine of the sales girl, away. Big girl, the bag check man said as she sat her ticket on the counter. Do you really have a husband? Malaya strained to clear her eyes, brighten her face, and push her cheeks up into a smile. She stood silently for a few, for a few seconds, then tilted her head and gave a slight shrug, as she thought a video girl might do. What, she said, you don't trust me? The man laughed. No, I trust you, he said. I trust you a lot. Then he paused. So what is your name? Alia, she said. Oh, the man smiled. Like the singer, she is pretty, like you. Yeah, Malaya said, like that, but smaller. My name is just two sounds, Alia. Alia, he repeated. Very nice. He gave her the bag along with the slip of bright green paper and a tattered pen. Alia, he said, my name is Clarence. Let me have your number, I'll take you out to eat. Your husband won't mind. 
<laughs> Malaya took a pen and paper, a flyer for a club she'd heard advertised on the radio but knew she'd never enter. She wrote the name as she imagined a girl like Alia might write it, all capital letters, the Y a lazy loop at the center, the A's arched perfectly like a pair of upturned smiles. She began to write a fake number, then changed her mind, crossing the digits out and writing her pager number instead. Nice to meet you, Clarence, she said, in the slow, syrupy voice she thought Alia would use to dismiss a man after a night of lukewarm sex. If I don't call you back for a while, don't worry. It means my man is there, but I'll call you when he's gone. You don't have to call again. The man nodded. Alia, he said, his eyes on her stomach. Big girl. Okay. Malaya stuck the inside of her lips and tried not to think of the man as she walked away. Thank you. Wow.